Good evening and welcome to a WATD political forum. I'm your moderator, Christine James, joined by reporter Charles Mathewson and Chris Helms of the Brockton Enterprise asking questions. Tonight, the race is for mayor of Brockton. We've got the incumbent, Robert Sullivan. Good evening. And his challenger, Fred Fontaine. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Timing us all is our own Lenny Rowe, and we're joined by our media partner, Brockton Community Access. Now, our format is simple. We've asked the candidates to have prepared opening and closing statements ready. The opening statement, no longer than two minutes, please, and a one-minute close. We have, Then we have a round of questions from the reporters, and we ask our candidates to please stick to one minute with your answer. And then, we also, then after that, we go to the lightning round, my favorite part, because I find anybody who's running for office has trouble with the lightning round. Here's why. The answers are either yes or no, or one or two sentences, and the reporter will ask you what kind of an answer that they want. Again, try to keep your answers to a minute. We have a strict timing on that. If you're still speaking at a minute, then you get a five-second grace countdown, then you get the bell, and if you're still speaking after that, then we cut the mics. But we do try to be good with the time because we've got a lot of good questions um, to do this. Now, we just took chose the uh, opening and closing order uh, out of our official stand-in koozie here. We'll begin with the current mayor, Robert Sullivan, then we'll go to Fred Fontaine. That order is reversed at the end. So good evening, should be a great forum, and welcome to the race for mayor for Brockton. Let's start with Mayor Sullivan. Thank you. Good evening, Christine and Chris and Charlie. I want to thank WATD 95.9. I want to thank Brockton Community Access as well for hosting this forum. I want to thank Fred Fontaine for joining me here tonight to talk about the issues of Brockton. My name is Robert Sullivan. I am the current mayor of the city of Brockton. It's been an honor privilege to serve in that capacity since I was elected in 2019 and re-elected in 21. Um, Being the mayor is is truly an honor and privilege, but it's a job that I feel that I'm well suited for. Uh, I would say uh, working diligently in a collaborative manner is key to be successful. Now, when I became mayor, I didn't think about the pandemic, right? It hadn't even come to the United States. But through collaboration, six weeks after I took office, we were dealing with a worldwide pandemic. So it's about thinking outside the box. It's about a business approach. We're talking about a budget of a half a billion dollars. We're in the people business here in the city of Brockton. So I'm running to continue uh, keeping Brockton moving forward. One thing that I did during the pandemic was I didn't halt construction in the city of Brockton. Many people did. Uh, Many mayors did. I didn't, and it's paid off dividends. We have three commuter stops in the City of Champions. Uh, Transit-oriented development is key. We have 700 housing units in the queue right now. It's working with all our nonprofits. It's working with all our partners in the City of Brockton. So I am running for re-election. I'm going to humbly ask all registered voters to go to the polls on Tuesday, November 7th. I will not let you down because I will continue to work for the best interests of the City of Champions. Again, my name is Robert Sullivan. On Tuesday, November 7th, I humbly ask for your vote and your support as we continue to move forward. We are better together in the City of Brockton. Thank you. That was the opening statement from Robert Sullivan. Now, opening statement, Mr. Fred Fontaine. Well, first of all, let me say thank you to all of you folks, you know, who came out, you know, we want to really make a great night between uh, me and Bob and Mahai. We've been friends for a long time. So basically, it's going to be a friendly, friendly thing we're going to do tonight. So uh, basically, let me tell you, my name uh, is Fred Fontaine. I'm prepared and honored to serve you as your next mayor of the city of Champion. My academic and mechanical engineering, I gained experience in municipal city government by working right here in the city of Brockton. Working as a bus driver, serving as BIMA, you know, BIMA is Brockton Emergency Management Agency for many years, since 2005 until now. I'm also, I'm also a small business owner. 30 year plus here in Brockton. My engineering training has provided me with the foundation and mindset for t- critical thinking. I operate for, from perspective, understanding, and learning. I get to know our PC's parts and system work together to build something bigger, better than themselves alone. I am empathize with, those, with many Brockton residents who feel left out and left behind by the current administration. I try to signal of community disengagement and disapproval is the rate 
at which parents are opting to leave the school district in search of better options for their children. When we see families are leaving the district at a record rate, what else can we say other than leadership has failed? When Chapter 7 funds from Commonwealth Massachusetts are diverted from their and 10. Sorry, the two minutes are up, but thank you very much. That's opening statement, Fred Fontaine. Remember, if during the forum you feel you didn't get to uh, say everything you wanted to say or maybe not complete an answer, you can always put that on your closing statement. So those are the opening statements. Let's go to questions now, and let's start with Chris Helms from Brockton Enterprise. Your question for the candidate and who your first question is directed at. Uh, yes. First of all, I want to thank Christine uh, and Charles for inviting me. Uh, the Brockton Enterprise is really happy to be here um, for this debate. Uh, so I'll start off with uh, let's start off with the schools. Um, and um, do I just do, do, do I, I pick we'll whoever? Start, we'll start with the mayor. And I'll OK. Just, I'll just OK. We'll start with you. Um, but I'd love to hear what Fred has to say to this as well. Um, as I'm sure both of you are aware, uh, today, the interim principal of Brockton High declared that tomorrow there's going to be an early release. So the students are going to go home, the teachers stay to have real talk about safety at the school. So this is the new interim principal saying we need to send the students home and the teachers need to get together and talk about safety and what is going on at our high school. Uh, So Bob, I mean, I know you're a proud graduate of Brockton High. Um, What would you do uh, to keep Brockton Public School students safe, um, and specifically at the high school? And uh, if you could be specific in what you're going to do. I can tell you, I'm actually going to be there tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. I have a meeting up there with Chief uh, Brendan Perez, the police chief, uh, first woman in the history of the city of Brockton, serving Brockton PD as the leader that I appointed. And I'm going to be there with Dr. Jim Cobbs and his executive team, and we're going to be talking to teachers. Uh, One of my children is in the Brockton Public Schools, not at Brockton High, but one of the middle schools. So as a parent, safety is paramount. We want to make sure our students are safe and the staff is safe. And so at the end of the day, we have a duty as not just the mayor, not just the chair of the school committee, which I serve as well, but as Brocktonians to make sure that Brockton High is safe. It's a wonderful school, wonderful offerings, but right now we have to figure out what's going on. Fist fights are unacceptable. So I do want to thank the new principal, who's the acting principal, uh, Jose Durante, who actually served as principal of South Middle School. He is a vested educator. So when I was asked later this afternoon if I could join them, I said, absolutely, I will be there and I'll bring Brenda Perez. We also have the school police, Sergeant Livingston, Mike Livingston, who is assigned up there as well to be there. He coordinates it. So Um, Safety is paramount, um, and we need to make sure that everybody is safe at Brockton High School. Thank you. One minute. Same question, Mr. Fontaine. Uh, First of all, um, thank you. Good good, good question. First of all, uh, Mr. Sullivan said that um, you want the safety of those children. First, you know, to be safe on those uh, those schools, what do we expect? The police cannot resolve those issues in school. We need more teachers, which have been laid off for the past, and 130 teachers have been laid off. So now we are running out of teachers. So without teachers in those schools, I don't think safety is going to be enough. You cannot bring police to the, to, to the school to really reinforce the safety of this issue. Myself, what I would love to do is bring more teachers, rehire them back, and also make sure every class is reduced. Instead of 30 children per class, reduce them the same way that we used to have them, at least we'll get control of those kids. Instead of having them on the cafeteria, sit down doing nothing. Basically, that's what I'll do. Do you have any follow-up question to that? Um, yes, I, I don't think I heard from either of you, though, a very specific plan like, are, is it more metal detectors? Is it some new intervention that hasn't been? Uh, you know, I'd love to hear some specifics uh, because clearly to date, especially at the high school, uh, what, what the city's been doing hasn't been working. Chris, let, let, me, let me ask you that. Okay, I'll give you a, a, another minute right. here. And For, then another uh, minute listen, like, like I said, you cannot bring, I understand they want to really control those kids with metal detectors, but it doesn't work. You have to have enough teachers on those schools to really having some mentors to be there with them, to help them out, to, to, be, to comprehend them. Instead of having metal detectors, police force, those kids are going to be rebelling against those things. We want to have teachers who really become friends with those kids to, to make them feel like they, 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 they are part of the society. So 
I graduated Simple. from Brockton High in 1988. My dad was a teacher there for over 30 years. At that time, we had uh, cafeteria teachers assigned to the cafe. We had teachers assigned to walking the hallways to check IDs as well. So I think we have to learn from the past to forge ahead to the future. So, you know, as, as the mayor and as a product of Brockton Public Schools, remember, Brockton High is one of the largest public high schools east of the Mississippi. So there's a lot of kids here. It's a small city among itself. So, you know, I can agree or disagree with Fred, but I can tell you it's action that's going to take. But to be an effective leader, you have to be a good listener. That's why I'm going up there tomorrow morning. We have to listen. We also have to look at the leaders that are the students, the class officers, the mentors that are the students. They're there every day, right? Fred and I aren't there every day. We've already gone to high school. But at the end of the day, it's making sure that safety is paramount. But you can't get there if you don't have listening sessions and then strategy sessions. And then you build upon those. And that's what's something I would, I'm going to advocate for tomorrow when I'm there at 8 o'clock. Mr. Student used to be there a long time ago. Okay. So you can what have you been 30, doing? 30 seconds more. Again, we're going to stick to the format. If you'd like another 30 seconds, we can do that. Okay. What I want to say, he's a friend of mine, but regardless, I have to tell him the truth. Because he's been there for 14 years as a city councilor, four years as a mayor. Yet nothing's been done to the Brockton Public School. So what you make you think now you're going to do differently? Okay. 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, and we're going to ask questions. I'd be happy no, to do that. No. I mean, <laughs> you, can, you can do that, and then we're going to go into another. Yeah, I can tell you wait, what wait, we're doing differently. I just speak. advocated for it. Stuff that has not been utilized that was effective in the past. But if we don't listen to the kids that are there, that are walking the hallways, that are in the classrooms. I mean, when I was there in 88, Fred, I had classrooms in the history class with 40 kids, right? We didn't have fistfights as much as right now. So at the end of the day, our goal is to make sure it's safe, that the parents, when they let their kids go to Brockton High, there's a comfort level there. So it's easy to throw fingers and point. But at the end of the day, we have a duty. We have a fiduciary duty. We have a duty as parents and as leaders. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. Okay. Let's go on to the next question. Charles Mathewson. Bob, the uh, total operating budget of the city is about 500, 500 million, correct? Well, 551. If you look at the city budget, is 493. And then you put in the enterprise about another 58. So about half a billion dollars. Yeah. And the school is the non. Yeah, well, yeah, it's two nineteen for the for the net, and then the non net's another eleven. So most communities around here, the split is uh, roughly sixty forty schools, general government. Why is it so much lower in Brockton? I think you have to look at first of all the different factors relative to the cherry sheet and to chapter seventy you know, in terms of the amount that we get. Brockton was always cheated. And that's why we filed lawsuits, the city of Brockton, the Webby case, the McDuffie case, the Hancock case, because Brockton was getting shafted in the funding from, from Beacon Hill. So that's why we got the Student Opportunity Act, right? Another $21 million that came down. So the, quote, poorer communities, which tend to be the gateway communities, which Brockton's a proud gateway community, was getting shortchanged. That's why there was a lawsuit. It was proven in Superior Court. So, you know, I think as someone that, has been in the city of Brockton, born at Brockton Hospital in 1970. Um, you know, we have to make sure that we get the best for the city of Brockton, right? That's why advocacy and leadership. Had I not gone to Washington, D.C. in April, the Cosgrove pool wouldn't have gotten an additional $3 million from the federal government by Joseph Biden. So again, it's about looking at the past picture, but also forging ahead to the future. That's the only way you can do it, Charlie. But if you look at the smaller communities, Brockton's the only city in Plymouth County, right? So that's another variable. How would you address that discrepancy? It's about 50-50, little less to the schools, other surrounding communities, it's 60-40. But, but, but other surrounding communities don't have the charter school, which we have in the city of Brockton. We often have to pay our proportional share to 65% of the kids that go to the Voctech, Southeastern Regional Vocational over in Easton. Great school, but we pay, you know, we pay a share of that. We also have a parochial school, right? We have Trinity Catholic. We also have Cardinal Spellman. So to, it's not apples to apples when you're saying some of the other communities in the Commonwealth, some of the smaller communities. We have 106,000 people. So education is paramount, but the the 50%, the 60-40 split. When you look at the pie, Charlie, we, we, the city, is funding whatever the schools is desiring. This year they requested 218. We gave them 218. Well, I can say I put it forward. The city council ratified it. Fred, on a related issue, you want more teachers in the schools. How would you address that funding discrepancy? Well, that's a big question. Um, basically, you know, first of all, I think the city needs – They've been complaining about the way the city is functioning, you know, by not going and, and really requesting the fund necessary for those schools. I think this is a big, big gap when you don't have enough people going out and request more money for the city, like other cities doing it. 
So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to make sure I hire people to go out f for those, for those funds necessary to bring, because you know, it's going to be difficult to really get those teachers back without money coming into the city. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure I hire real, real people to go out to, to the state house and request money for, 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 for the school. From the state house? I mean, yes. Okay. For the governor's office, you know. Let's give him another minute because we had mm -hmm. uh, another minute for Robert Selman. So you want to elaborate on that plan a little bit? Okay. Remember that. They've been complaining about uh, Brockton always is behind. When you go to request money, we don't have enough lobbies to go and to request those funds. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure I hire people who really could, could get and, and request those, those funds to, to bring to Brockton. And basically, there's a lot of folks around here who could do this job. And this is what we, the lack of those folks we don't have. This is why we, we are still behind in everything we are doing, not only for school, for everything. You're listening to a political forum here. The race is for the mayor of Brockton. We've got the incumbent, Robert Sullivan, and his challenger, Fred Fontaine. Just going to switch topics here real quickly, and I want to get into the homeless population in Brockton. What is, and this is a, a two-part question, what is the current state of it? That's the first part. I'll give you a minute for that. And what needs to happen towards its management, care, and resources? Fred Fontaine. What's the question? Uh, Brockton's homeless population. Oh. What is the current state of it, in your opinion and view? Well, let me tell you, this is a big issue for Brockton. Everywhere else, they do have the same issue. But Brockton, never, I never see Brockton that bad since I've been in Brockton. If you realize that we get more than double than what we have. When I moved to Brockton 30 years ago, Brockton used to be quiet, much more quiet. But now you see Mayor Who, for instance, from Boston, keep on shipping people to Brockton. So we do have enough already on our own. So first of all, you got to make sure you go to Boston, tell the mayor, we cannot accept. It's unacceptable to keep on sending people to Brockton. And also, the people that we already have in Brockton, we have to make sure they live in Brockton. We don't have enough place. The shelter is already overloaded. So that's going to be very difficult to do. So we're going to have to make sure we, we block those folks coming into Brockton if they don't have a space for them. And then the second part, you've got another minute. So what with, with the people that you already have there, what needs to happen with the management, care, and resources that are available for that population? Well, I believe we plan on moving the shelter, as you, you know, the mayor know as well. We're planning on moving the shelter somewhere else. So my plan, I would love to see, you know, if we could redevelop more option to give them a place to stay. Because when they stay at night, at the shelter, for instance, you cannot leave them on the street because this is what make Brockton become bad. We have to facilitate another space for them to stay in daytime. A day, they could come over, take a shower, feed them, but we have to get the funds from the federal government to help them out. Okay. Same question, Bob uh, Sullivan. Yes. First part of it, what is, in your opinion, what is the current state of the homeless population in Brockton? Well, let me be clear. No one chooses to be homeless, right? There's variables, white people on the street, mental health, behavioral health, drugs, alcohol. Maybe they lost their house in the foreclosure epidemic, right? We all grew up with the principle of a roof over your head. Um, we are, meaning we, my administration is working diligently on the homeless situation. We've been working with Father Bill's Mainspring since I took office. Jasmine Bradshaw is in my office. She's a licensed social worker. She's a social services director. We are definitely seeing an uptick in our homeless population. But again, it's through collaboration, right? I work with Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. I was with Sue Joss and Dr. Chelly today, the CEO and co-CEO, talking about homeless. And I was with, with some folks that were homeless that came into City Hall to meet with us because, you know, Bamsey and Gandara and all these wonderful uh, service providers, we have to leverage all of them, right? And so, yes, Fred is correct, and I've advocated for it. Manly Street will be uh, the new campus setting for wraparound services, which is going to piggyback on the success they did at the old Carlton House, the roadway in. We need to provide the services. It's a services issue right now. The drugs and alcohol are off the charts, right? Fentanyl's off the charts, but the mental behavioral issues are real, and that's what we have to do. Okay, and the second part, so what needs to happen right now towards the management care and resources available to that population? What can happen right now? 
Well, right now it is happening. We are working together. Um, we have uh, a task force, a homeless task force, the mayor's task force that goes out and walks. Last January, I was out there for the point of time count. You count the homeless population. Now we are seeing an uptick of folks coming. I don't know if they're coming from the city of Boston, but they're coming to Brockton. And why are they coming to Brockton? Well, before the hospital fire, there was there was a lot of free health services at both Brockton Hospital and Good Sam. So they were coming for services. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, we as not, not just as elected officials, or people that live in the city of Brockton, but as human beings, we have to have a compassionate approach to help these folks, right? We have to give them on the road to recovery. We have to give them the tools and the proverbial toolbox to succeed. A lot of these folks that come to City Hall every day are struggling. They have to leave Father Bill's Mainspring at a certain time, and then what are they doing? They're walking around the city of champions. So as mayor, what I have done is going to continue, if I'm fortunate enough to be reelected, is to make sure that we provide services with the providers already providing, the experts. I'm not an expert in the homeless population or in medicine, but there are experts in the city of Brockton. We need to leverage those. Thank you. Let's go back to uh, Chris Helms from the Enterprise. Question for the candidates. Yes, I, um, I, either, I think I want to stay with the homeless for a second and just get a little deeper there and, and be very specific. So um, an item in the news today was that um, uh, Mayor Wu, who Fred was just talking about, um, uh, her proposal was accepted by Boston City Council to ban encampments of homeless people. Now, uh, my understanding of that proposal is that it only takes effect if there's a shelter bed for that person. They're only going to take away the person's tent if there's a shelter bed. Uh, so my question for each of you, and I guess we're starting with Fred, would oh. be... Well, let's start with the mayor. So oh, we'll start, we'll start with the mayor. Oh, and I'll start, start with you. So would you, uh, would you uh, ban encampments of homeless people in Brockton? And, and if so, you know, why or why not? Well, I think, first of all, the Martin case, which was in the ninth, I think, ninth circuit is going to be paramount to that. You know, the ACLU will have something to say. When I was on the city council, we voted an ordinance for, to, to outlaw, in essence, panhandling the city of Brockton, and that had it to be rescinded. So, you know, my view is we are out there. Um, John Messia, who's my director of constituent services and community engagement, is out there with Jasmine. They're walking to DW and they're walking to the, walking to the old CSX property. You know, the tents that were in the city of Brockton are back again, right? So it's making sure, again, that people understand that we could provide services to get you housing. Now, the list to get into the Brockton Housing Authority is months, if not years, down the line. But ultimately, what people need right now is they need some assistance, right? When, when the Braymore Nursing Home, thank God, Brockton, uh, Boston Medical and about that. That's for mental behavioral health issues and addiction issues. That's really a catalyst for change right now in the city of Brockton. So to answer your question, would I outlaw it? I think the city solicitor would have to opine on that, quite honestly. I can't speak to the, to the mayor of Boston. I'm the mayor of the city of Brockton. But um, we are continuing to work to help people. We're in the people business, Chris. Same question, Fred Fontaine. Uh, um, I'm not sure if uh, Mr. Sullivan realized, you know, uh, what's going on really in the city of Brockton because I, I do, I'm a, I'm a small business guy right on Pleasant Street. I don't know if you guys know Pleasant Street. It's not pleasant anymore because, you know, <laughs> no, not at all. Because when they chase, chase those guys from the park, all of the other folks who own a business from down Pleasant Street all the way up, we pay the price. We pay the price very hard and we have to pay taxes to the city. So what do you think? We should think about it. Small businesses are suffering, not only from downtown, but everywhere in the city. So I agree with Bob when he said that we have to find a solution for those folks. But what's been done before? What have we done? Nothing. So as your new mayor, people who's listening, definitely I will change the situation because those guys, they know me very well. They expect me to do something better because for now, the administration right now doing nothing. So I will make sure I, prove, I, I get the, the necessary fund to make you. it happen. Thank you. Did you want to ask any follow-up with that, the, those issues? Um, well, I, it, it is a big uh, – I, I guess there is one more thing okay. uh, uh, related to this. Um, and I guess the way I want to put it is this. Uh, um, obviously, you both of you referenced that Father Bills is going to be moving away from downtown to, to Manly. Um, so what else does the city need to do to – to balance the interests of we have the homeless people, renters, homeowners, and small business owners like, like Fred himself. Um, how do you balance all those competing interests? Let's go with Fred. Let me tell you, you know, sometimes you know what I do? You know, I, I hate to see those folks suffering that bad. I walk in, sit down with them, and tell them 
trying to figure out what's, what happened to them. Because you have to know what happened to those people. I sit down right across the church, sit down with them like this, trying to figure out, I said, guys, what happened to you? How did, be, how did you become like this? And I heard those stories. That's hurt. That's really hurt. Because, you know, it could be like your brother, your sister, everybody else. So we have to try. You know, I mean, this is one of those reasons I'm running as well. Because I cannot accept to see a human being living like this. We have to do better than that. And I will try my best to do better. I will try. I mean, I can give you an example. Irving's has been across from Brockton Community Access for decades, right? And they were thinking about leaving. And so I said, please come and, and meet with me. And they've met with me, you know, several times. Uh, Perkins Park is right next door. So the Manly Street Project's a game changer, right? It's campus settings, wraparound services. It's going to help people, right? It's also on federal land. A lot of the vets that are homeless are going to be able to go to the VA hospital. But that's not going to happen for several years. I've committed $650,000 of ARPA money to help that project. I mean, that's a game changer. But I I think the question is how do we how do we help many entities right and business owners are, are, are paramount right we need to make sure businesses stay here and we also that they blossom and we attract new businesses so it's it is somewhat of a, of, a, of a balancing act to be honest with you chris because i drive down pleasant street every day every single day i drive by fred's location i i meet with the pastors every other friday we have a prayer session dr wire pastor roberto john yazinski of father bill's mainspring you know we have to figure out when the folks are on the streets during the day when they can't go right now to father bill's during the day where are the wraparound services they can get right now? And that's leveraging, again, BAMSI and Board of Health and Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. Thank you. Charles Matthewson, questions for the candidates? Just to switch topics a little bit, uh, this is for Bob. I'm going to preface this by saying I'm sure that the water that uh, Brockton residents are receiving at their tap uh, has passed muster with the health department and, uh, and the state. However, uh, in the spring, uh, a study funded by uh, people concerned with silver uh, determined that there are dangerous levels of cyanobacteria in Montpensier Pond and in Silver Lake. Uh, could you say how that is being filtered out before it gets to the tap? I mean, I can tell you that because I've met with the DPW Commissioner Pat Hill many times on this in our city solicitor as well. Um, you know, we, we have had it tested. We want to make sure it's safe, not just for the city of Brockton, but neighboring communities as well that, that draw from that. Um, and we feel very, very confident that, it's, that it is indeed safe. Now, what's happening is Mont Ponson is the, the, the water is going over to the Silver Lake component, right? And so there's a, they call it a cross-contamination. But we are feeling very confident from our uh, medical um, analysis that it is indeed safe. Now, I've also met with the folks over there. I've, I've been to events there. There's been this um, feeling for decades, and it needs to change. We need to work together on that endeavor. I mean, I do support uh, all of Plymouth County. But right now, I can tell you as the mayor of the city of Brockton, the DPW commissioner has promised me that it's safe. I mean, it, if it's not safe, Charlie, we would shut it down. Now, the other thing we have to look at is how old the pipes are coming back to the city of Brockton, right? I mean, some of the pipes in the city of Brockton from 1880. So we have to make sure that there isn't a leak right now because that water is paramount, not just to Brockton, but neighboring communities. Did you want to ask a follow-up? Yeah, it's a very old problem. It goes, yep. as you say, to... to 1880, 1890s, yep. it was one of the reasons that Brockton boomed in the 1890s. Uh, they had fresh water. Uh, it was socialized. Yep. Uh, but exactly what are you doing to make sure that it's safe when it gets from the lake to the tap? Well, first of all, it's, it's being filtered, right, through the process. And I'm not a water expert. I don't pretend to be a water expert, but I rely on the experts that are telling me that Mayor Sullivan, it is safe. Uh, my family drinks the water. We, we, we drink it right out of the tap, and I always have, and I think it tastes beautiful. But we have to make sure that it is indeed safe. And so I can just tell you, Charlie, that I've been assured that it is indeed safe. So if anybody's listening here and they're drinking tap water in Brockton or any neighboring communities that draws from Silver Lake, you know, I'm drinking it, and my family's drinking it, so I feel confident on that. Okay, Fred, uh, what would you do to increase a, a sense of inclusiveness uh, in the city and participation? 
Well, remember that the city now is composed of more likely um, the minority community become the majority of this community now, but they don't have any representation in the city. If you compare the, like, uh, for instance, I don't, I hate to do this, but I had to. The west side and the north side of Brockton, you could see the difference. And this is east side and Campello, yes. Yes, you could I see know. the difference, you know. And it's unfortunate, but I am on the north side myself. You know, if you drive down there now, those streets are always dirty, filthy. The road is not the same than the other side. And we want to make Brockton as one, beautiful like it's supposed to be, not one side. And the way to do this is like represent, have representation everywhere in this city and do the best for everyone, small business, big business, encourage some big business to come here to Brockton, invest, instead of uh, really blocking them out. We need more good business to come to Brockton. We have this situation right there now. They keep on blocking everyone who wants to come. It make it difficult for small business people to survive. So when I get in, I will make sure I open the door and lock the city. Yeah, I, I, I have I'm never to. golfed at the Montello uh, golf course. See that again? I've never, I've never golfed at the Montello golf course. No, it's uh, it's 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 um, you're yeah, talking about uh, that was a joke. For oh, us. I know. <laughs> I okay, Charlie. This, this okay, that's a good one. That was a good one. You got me. You right. got me. Stick to the question. That's okay, Charlie. Go ahead. No stand up. W U D Fields, Thorny Lee, etc. It's all on the west side. D W D Fields is very nice, you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what is there a question here? Yeah. What would you do specifically? I understand the problem. Mm -hmm. What would you do specifically to? increase uh, participation from Campello, Montello, the east side? Well, they do have some business who represent those people, you know, but uh, for some reason I, I, I believe uh, the lack of um, news, to pass, it, pass over the news to those folks around there, it's like they're not paying attention. You know, and if we put more news out to let them know, you know, what's going on in those Montello news, you know, get them in interact with, with what's going on in the city. I think, I think that will probably be helpful to get them involved. Because for now, they feel like uh, it's not going to do nothing for them, so they just don't get involved. So I bet you, if they really pass the news, let them know what's going on, and be a part of the city, I think, they will be, I think that will come up to, to exactly how to integrate them into it. Thank you. Any other comments you want to share, I, John? I'll definitely make sure that happens. <laughs> All you need to do is uh, turn the uh, cap down off Thatcher Street into a golf course, and you'll be all set. You will die, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Now, all right, Charlie. <laughs> speaking about getting around Brockton, for those people who depend on public transportation, that can be a challenge. Uh, what works? What needs to change? And do you think the average resident cares about whether the buses run on fossil fuel or electricity? Fred. Well, myself... You know, since, you know, you could see that everything is changing. Time is changing. I would love to see uh, those buses run and, um, with you know, an electricity, you know, because that for, for the safety of the atmosphere, you know. Because now you could see that we cannot still depend on oil, you know, time is changing. This is what I would probably push in to make sure that happen. Okay. Anything else? You've got a little bit of time left here. Well, the only thing I could say, you know, uh, to, 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 to come back to Charlie, you know, I don't know if any one of you drive down to, to, to the north side because, you know, I mean, uh, I wish we could, we could really do better on the north side, you know. Um, because I know, you know the mayor said he drive down there, but uh, no one will not want to come down to invest in this city the way it is. Okay. Same question, Bob Sullivan, about transportation in Brockton. It can be a little difficult to get around. What what needs to change and do you think people care whether the buses run on electricity or fossil fuel? It's even a little more difficult right now with all the detours, but through progress, we're doing some massive developments. That's why we're having some short-term um, detours here in the city of Brockton. Uh, as mayor, you also I also s serve as chairman of the Bat Bus Corporation, and I do I do believe people. Uh, I mean, we just this year got one hundred ninety eight thousand dollars state funding uh, to put thirty one electric uh, EV charging stations in the city of Brockton. So you know to leverage the relationship, I meet with the state delegation. Brockton's very fortunate. We have one senator, three state reps, right? I meet 
every other week in my office with the elected officials in Beacon Hill. And, you know, we also leverage our relationship with the MBTA, right? We have uh, Keolis that serves the, the commuter rail. We have three commuter stops in the city of Brockton. Jump on the train, get in the South Station, 35 minutes. Jump in a car, get to Providence in about 35 minutes. So geographically, we're doing well. Um, this summer, again, we were able to get uh, the Cape Flyer to bring folks down over the bridge to Cape Cod if they wanted to do that. And, you know, the pilot programs for reduced fares is key as well. So not everybody does have uh, an opportunity to drive, but I do think electric is the wave of the future. There's no doubt about it. Okay, thank you. Let's go back to Chris Helms from the Enterprise. Uh, Questions yes. for the candidates? Yes, definitely. Let's move on to another topic that I know a lot of uh, listeners will be interested in, uh, and that's the future of the old fairgrounds in Brockton. Uh, now, um, obviously, the mayor has put forward a proposal uh, for the future of that. Uh, and obviously, some things have changed in civic life since that proposal was first put forward. Um, so the way I want to ask this is, given the current situation and with the, the, the deficit trouble on the city and school side in mind, um, are you for or against the city taking control of the fairgrounds and remarketing the properties? And please say why. Let's start with Bob Sullivan. Well, Chris, I mean, you, you know this. As mayor, I put it forward, but only the city council, and I really honor and, and respect all 11 city councils, only they can decide if we're going to move forward, right? I mean, I can sign memorandum of agreements and contracts, but they can only appropriate funds. So personally, did I, do I think it's a good idea? It's 65 acres and, and really a key part of the city of Brockton, right? And, and it's on the west side, but literally it's right across the street from Brockton High School, and it's on 123, which is a state-recognized road. So 65 acres is a lot of land in the city of Brockton, where we're a pretty a dense population. So I don't know if the city council will or will not uh, ratify that. I think they're putting a pause on it. They're also, like Fred and I, they're on the ballot too, uh, November 7th. Um, and usually there's a change in legislative session. We know there's going to be three, two new councilors, right? Two councilors are not running again, a councilor at large and a ward councilor. So mm-hmm. all I can say is um, I think we have to figure out and try to control our own destiny of what's going to go there. I was adamantly opposed to have a uh, Amazon-type uh, distribution center on Belmont Street in the city of Brockton. It just doesn't make sense. Not a good location for that. Same question, Fred Fontaine. Yeah, uh, definitely, you know, I mean, that was unfortunate that uh, the mayor pushed that uh, in advance to say, yes, he, you know, signed an end. First of all, I would probably not sign in before I really talk to my city councilors, you know, well, I agree with them first. Yeah. But they say no, they, some of them say no, Bob. <laughs> you know, some of them say you did not consent. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, no, that's, that's, that's cultural, what I'm saying, because, you know, it's just true. But, uh, but definitely, you know, I think, with that deficit, I would put a pause on it. You know, I mean, uh, we cannot go forward with a deficit of that much money, $14 million on the school. I would probably put a pause and wait until to see what's going to happen. You know, and but it's a good idea. If we did have the money, uh, uh, there was no no debt. You know, those $14 million were still there. I think that's a great idea, what you did, uh, to really push that in. If the city was doing fine, because I will not let, somebody else, another developer, come down and take it over to do, to do whatever they want. I would love to see the city take charge. But for now, I don't think it's a good idea. Okay. Any follow-up for that? Um, yes, yes. That, okay. So um, uh, given where we are now, um, uh, boy, how do I want to phrase this? Um, I guess what I would say is um, uh, e- e- would the responsible thing to do to be just take it off the table now? Um, because, I mean, I'll, clearly, uh, from a process point of view, yes, it does have to pass from the, the city council. Uh, but just given everything else, is it time to just pull the plug on this? Okay. Let's start with Freddie. Each one of you a minute. Same question. Yes, it's quick. You know, basically, think about it. For now, I think the city is having so much trouble. I will just put a pause on it, table it. Same question. Yeah, I mean, it's just sitting there right now in the city council. So in essence, it is tabled, right? And so we have to see what the councilors decide to do. But I will say this, it's privately owned. So private property can, as long as it meets the standards of zoning, they can pretty much put something in there that we may not all be happy about. We want it to be something that's beneficial, that's a tax revenue generator, and also something that because it's on 123, a lot of people call Belmont Street the new Main Street. We want to make sure it's the right fit for that part of the city of Champions. Charles Matthewson. Bob, we know what you plan to do to resolve the question of the $14 million of overspending. Although it's only 3% of the budget, how do you lose $14 million? 
I don't think it was lost. Uh, I think it was overspent, and there's a difference there. And so when it was brought to my attention, um, you know, what the first thing we did, Charlie, was we reached out to the Department of Revenue and our inside auditor, outside auditor, CLA. And so um, thanks to the, the efforts of the school committee, and I serve as chair, there's seven elected members, and I'm the chair. Uh, we just had a meeting last Tuesday where three community members, and the fourth is an alternate, is going to be working together to, in essence, interview and hire an external independent audit firm to do the audit. We have to find out how it happened, what were the system failures, right? How do you overspend, number one, and make sure we enact policies and procedures so it can never happen again. So I don't think it was lost, as, as some people I say. say. lost. It was lost track of. Well, I, again, I think that's what's going to be found out in the audit and the investigation. You know, if you look at what some people said in the newspaper, they, they, they expressed why it was overspent. I can tell you right now that um, we understand as elected officials, you can't overspend. Only deficit spend snow and ice in Massachusetts, and you have to pay it back the next year. So, again, I'm, I'm ready, willing, and able to see what the findings are. I'm excited to see what the findings are, but we will get findings. Okay. The question was supposed to be, how long ago did he know that money was lost? I would love to know because myself, under my watch, you know, I mean, I would have to know. I would, I would really go grill everybody to know exactly. Under my watch, you let $14 million pass. When did I know about it? That probably what you should probably ask them, you know, I mean, did you let that happen? It would be tough, you know, to let that happen under my watch because since I am uh, the chairman, I'm in charge. So $14 million is not $14 million. It's, it's tough. It's, it's, it's tough for the cost, I mean, for the, for the parents. It's tough for the taxpayers. It's tough for everybody. You know I mean? I would have to give a better explanation about it, you know? I mean... Uh, question? Yes, for both of you. Uh, and Bob, you, you referenced this a little bit. Would you... Brockton has uh, sort of an odd uh, structure of uh, school and... and municipal finances, do you think or would you consider structural changes? I think we have to. I think we have to look at structural changes, not just on the financial component, but, you know, I think we have to look at HR. There's an HR on the school side. There's an HR on the city side. There's custodials on the school side. There's custodials on the city side. There's uh, operational folks on schools and cities. I think the game changer is going to be decided. We're going to get a resolution. We're going to figure out how it happened, and we're going to make sure it never happens again for any future mayor uh, and any future elected official. But as a parent in BPS, you know, I, I understand why people are upset because I'm upset as well. But I can tell you this. Do we think best practices can be corrected? Yeah. I think it makes sense to look at any alternatives or any future things. Look at what other cities are doing. Do they merge the two? I mean, to me, it doesn't necessarily make sense. It's always been this way. But I don't know why you have... Again, human resources on both sides because on the school side, the retirees and the, and the teachers get their insurance through the, through, through the city side, the HR on the city side. So to answer your question, Charlie, I think we have to look at anything and everything that's going to be proactive, beneficial, and uh, reimagining. Fred? Again, uh, it's a simple question. When did you know that money was lost? I don't think that's the question you just asked. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, I, I would love to you. know because, you know, I could you consider <laughs> structural changes, uh, city versus schools. Going again? Would you consider a structural change in and the relationship between the city and the schools? I, I would love to see that happen because, you know, I mean, uh, first of all, uh, having the mayor in charge, he get enough on his own. I would probably see somebody else take charge of the school, but still reporting to the mayor, but let somebody else, in the spirit of let somebody else take care of this, because the mayor have already had too much on his head to take in care of. So let's split it up, let somebody else do that. That's probably, that's probably the best thing to do for the city at, you know, for going forward. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Bell? Okay. Uh, with a number of Brockton stories garnering a lot of attention recently, how do you explain such a low turnout at the city's preliminary election? 4,876 voters out of 59,560 registered voters. That's 8.19% turnout. Let's start with you, Fred. How, why it's, such a bad turnout? I was so shocked and so upset. With a city of 54 million, I mean 54,000 registered voters and only 5,000 voted. 
myself, you know, this is why, you know, uh, on the primary that happened, but, you know, on the final, I try my best. What you see on my platform, what I did, I put on other cities what they do. They let people know when the time to vote. They put a big sign on top, say, time to vote, your vote count. And think the city need also to do some work by letting those folks know the date to vote. Now I see they did that um, in, the, in, the, uh, in the final. But the primary, no one knows. Some of them say, I didn't know. So I think the city had to work on that. Because remember that, um, the minority community sometimes, they get so busy doing certain things. You know, they will not pay attention. So we have, as city officials, to try our best to, to, to help them out to know this is the time to vote. Two, three weeks in advance, that will be best. Okay. Same question, Bob Sullivan. Why yeah, I mean, and Fred and I can agree on this. It was the most beautiful day for a preliminary election probably in the history of the city of Brockton, right? And, and the, the, the turnout was, was not good at all. It was horrible. And, you know, I, I know we did early voting because I authorized it at the Shaw Center. Um, and and it's, it started again this Saturday, but we did it for the preliminary as well, early voting up there. Um, you know, we have an elections commissioner that is putting on social media and putting out the placards. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the apathy is. I don't know if it's trickled down from some of the shenanigans that are going on in Washington, D.C. I just don't know. But I do know this. Tip O'Neill always said this, right? All politics is local. He wasn't lying. What starts on the local level is the is the impact of the everyday person that lives or works in the city of Brockton. So, you know, Fred and I are working as diligently as we can to get more people to get out there and vote. But if you're a registered voter, it really is your duty, right? I mean, people have died for our ability to go out and vote. So I don't have the answer on why. I, I'm hoping it's going to be another great day. Uh, but we have to continue to just showcase how important every vote matters, every vote counts. Okay. Thank you. Let's go back to Chris Helms from the Brockton Enterprise. Yes, I, I, I was really happy to hear the discussion about uh, the uh, the detailed discussion about the deficit and how the city is going to move on from here. But but I do want to uh, look in the rearview mirror a little bit and dig down. This is just for Mayor Sullivan. So, Mayor, you've told us publicly that you learned that it was a $14.4 million deficit in early August. Now, there are some residents who are never going to believe that you found out then. They believe that you learned much earlier, perhaps in May. And even the ones who don't think you knew earlier may say, well, the guy should have known. You know, he runs the school committee. He's the chairman of the school committee. What do you say to residents who have those particular concerns? I mean, people know me and, and my reputation and the way I was brought up. I'm an honest person. There's no need to lie. And you're o you only know what you're told, right? That's all. That's the facts. And, you know, myself and the seven members I served with, we weren't told. I was told on August 8th. I've said that. It was confirmed again on the 9th when then Superintendent Mike Thomas came to confirm it. And then he did a story in the Enterprise and on TV. Um, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed. I said that night how dismayed I was. Um, you know, and systemic change has to happen. And it kind of goes back to what Charlie was saying. You know, we have the CFO right now on the city side, uh, Troy Claxon. He comes to every school committee meeting. His team is working diligently right now on the, on the, on the school side. Desi, I call Commissioner Riley. Thanks to Desi, we have two other people paid for by Desi helping us. It's called Open Architects. One of them is a guy named TJ Plan, who used to be the school and city CFO up in Springfield, Massachusetts. So I can only tell people the truth. That's what I've always done as a service member in the city of Brockton. And people are either going to believe me or not believe me, Chris. Okay. Very good. Well, I'll switch gears then for a question that's more um, uh, uh, appropriate for Fred. So, um, Fred, when you and I have been talking, I know that you have a real interest in uh, STEM, and uh, which is... Uh, what does that stand for? The science, science technology, technology and engineering. And engineering. Yes, yes. So um, if you become mayor, if the, if the residents vote for you, what would you do to attract uh, biotech, both, uh, both companies and also educational opportunities in, in the STEM field? Uh, remember that. I'm a mechanical engineer by trade myself. You know, I like to see those young kids using that STEM program because I will – open it up for all kids. This is a great, great program, you know. If you see those kids, oh, I see them myself, you know. I was fortunate to see them. And I would love to see this program open up for every kid in Brockton. Because if you do this, those kids, this is a part of safety as well. If those, if those kids get involved in this kind of program, you know, their mind will be busy. Instead of going on the street, 
giving problem to the city, you know, I think they will be focused on something else. And at least the city will get a good break. You see them on the motorcycle on the street, on the middle of the street, you know, if we give them those programs, for instance, trade program, you know, all those programs in Brockton, you will see more people moving into Bro to Brockton instead of moving out. Now we do have a lot of people moving out of Brockton because the school system is really a mess. And we want to see those people coming in back. And with those programs, I think that would be a great thing to bring them back. Charlie, question for the candidates? Yes. Fred, yes. I have a great-grandfather who moved to Brockton uh, from Northern Ireland, started out a business, was quite successful. Uh, what is it like to be an immigrant to Brockton now? Let me tell you, from Haiti to Cambridge to Brockton, that's, that's, that's a trip. You know, now I, I feel like more Brocktonian than, than, than anybody else. Guess what? Because I'm fighting for Brockton. And uh, Cambridge, I didn't want to come to Brockton because at that time, Brockton had a bad reputation. But I say, it's not the city. It's we can change it. The city have nothing to, to, to do with what's going on right now. We need a, some good leadership, some good people, and you will see this city going to be transforming in a positive, like, like the way we're supposed to treat the city. And everybody will be happy to say, I'm from Brockton, instead of saying, I'm not from Brockton. I think that's the best way to, to treat Brockton. Okay. What, what is this? We're, we're getting close to the end of the time. Okay. For Bob Sullivan, then we're going to go to lightning round. Okay, got it. Bob, tell me what the state of uh, immigration is in Brockton. Well, my own grandparents came here from Ireland to work in the shoe factories, and uh, I want to thank the diversity of the city of Brockton. Brockton has always been a city of immigrants, people that are coming here to better their lives for the next generation, right? And just this year, 2023, I was recognized as the Humanitarian Award winner by Haitian Community Partners. So it's about leveraging all the diversity in the city of Brockton. People kind of laugh at me when I do these flag raisings. Why are you wasting your time? I'm not wasting my time. We're honoring the people that are coming from all around the world to Brockton for a reason. Brockton has always been a melting pot. Now, can we do better things? Absolutely. It's leveraging. That's why I advocated to the city council this year to have a standalone department called the Office of Immigration Services. They disagreed with me, but then I went back to the bat and I said, could we at least have an immigration director in the mayor's office? And they agreed to that. So we're already right now getting resumes of people. We need to continue to help all aspects of the city of Brockton to better the lives of people that are coming here to do just that, the city of champions. Okay. We're going to go to the lightning round now, and that is when the reporters will ask questions, and they, they will say whether they want a yes or no answer or one or two sentences tops. So I'm going to start because I ask the same question <laughs> at every political forum, and you probably know what it is. <laughs> county <laughs> government. <laughs> county <laughs> government, <laughs> stay or go. No. Yes or no. Bob Sullivan. Keep it. Okay. County government, stay or go. Keep it. Okay. Chris? All right. Yes or no question. Is it as easy as it should be to open a business in Brockton? Fred, yes or no? I hate Lightning. Yes no. <laughs> Lightning. Yes. Yes, okay. Oh, hold on, we just got a phone. That's Fred Fontaine telling me that it is no, easy I, I to open right. a business. Okay, okay. We'll, 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 we'll just the question. repeat the question. Yeah, okay, okay, I'll please. repeat the question. Mm -hmm. Is it as easy as it should be? Oh, no. To open oh, no, a business no, no. in Brockton. Sorry, no, that's a no, no. Okay. <laughs> I thought it would be a hard okay. uh, no. I thought it would be a hard no for me. <laughs> I had to get you right. No. Yes, yeah. yes or no? No, we have Bob. to work okay. on it. Okay, okay. Charlie? Other than D.W. Fields Park, what is your favorite place in the city? <sighs> wow. My favorite place. Uh, D.W. Fields Park is nice. I like the golf course, you know. Okay. Just one, just other an answer. Than, other than D.W. Field. Uh, I, talk, uh, I think I like... Uh, I like the mayor's office, you know. Okay. <laughs> you can visit any time, Fred. Okay. Visit any time. Okay. Same question, Bob. I, uh, I don't look like a runner, but I've done New York and Boston. I, I run at Marciano on a regular basis. I love Marciano Stadium. I love it. Okay. We're going to go to uh, closing statements now. Remember, they can be a minute. We're going to reverse the order. This time we're <laughs> going to uh, start with Fred Fontaine. One minute, your closing statement for us tonight. Okay, I'm going to do it on, um, on a nice way because I believe, Tassi, first of all, thank you to all of you folks who came out um, to bring that um, to a nice, 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 uh, I could say nice event for me, you know. Um, but let me tell you folks, you know, um, it's going to be up to you to decide the next two years coming up. Either you want to move left or right. 
because the way this city is moving, if you form Brockton, you will realize I don't think it's a positive way. So when I get elected, I will have an open door policy for all of you, small business, big business, and you will feel proud to be a part of Brockton. And the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean up this city. The city did a good cleanup. And as a small businessman myself, I know your pain. And November 7, you go out and vote, and vote for me, Fred Fontaine. It's only two years, what do you have to lose? Thank you. Fred Fontaine, that was your closing statement. Closing statement, Robert Sullivan. And I want to thank WATD, and I want to thank the Brockton Enterprise, and of course BCA for being here. I want to thank Fred Fontaine. You know, putting your name on a ballot uh, is a daunting task. You sacrifice a lot of time away from your family, and I have three kids and a wife, and I support them, and they support me, and I'm so thankful. I'm humbly going to ask for your vote again on Tuesday, November 7th. Uh, I want to continue to serve the city of Brockton's two-year terms as mayor of the city of Brockton. We have development going on right now. We have a new public safety building. We have catalysts for development development downtown. We have the opera projects, Council on Aging, the War Memorial, City Hall. There's going to be parks and playgrounds all around the city of champions being renovated. So again, I am humbly asking for you to go to the polls. First of all, go to the polls. It's going to be a good day, Tuesday, November 7th. Polls open at 7 a.m. They close at 8 p.m. But, you know, we need to continue to work in a proactive manner, right? We need to be welcoming, inclusive, but we also have to think outside the box. How do we attract businesses here? How did me, Nina, come here and have a $12 million facility and leave Needham? need them because I sat down and talked to them. How we have a professional baseball coming here, right? They have 80 games and with the Brockton Rocks. It's because I've met with people and talked. We're in the people business and I ask for your vote on Tuesday, November 7th. Thank you. Thank you. That was Robert Sullivan. You've heard the candidates tonight. They both want your vote to be the mayor of Brockton. The election is on November 7th. We advise people get out and vote. I want to thank everybody from uh, Brockton Community Television tonight. Hmm? That's right. Well, thank you. Uh, we've got we've got Chris Helms from the Enterprise, Charles Matthewson from WATD. We've got Lenny Road timing people here, and we've got Larry uh, Nelson, our engineer. And as we will bring you complete election results that night, as I tell people all the time, remember: if you don't vote, you don't have a voice. Thanks for listening. I'm Christine James, ninety-five nine WATD.